In this exercise, we will illustrate the Zanibekov uh, effect, which corresponds to some instability in the rotation of rigid body uh, in the space. So if I go to the Wikipedia page, we can see here a video so in the space where we have a body rotating and uh, it looks like uh, the axis of rotation change its orientation periodically. To illustrate the Zanibekov effect, we'll consider a parallelepiped given in the figure of mass m with a density which is uniform. We recall the formula for the inertia matrix given here. And we have to compute the inertia matrix of the parallelepiped. So I have this, and uh, this is uh, my parallelepiped, and I will this matrix here. I is a three three matrix where here I have I one one, I one two, and so on. Uh, one three. Here also I have some coefficient, and the last one is I. 3, 3. So it is a 3, 3 matrix. So I will compute I, uh, 1, 1 to start. And from this formula, I know that it is the integral on the volume, and the volume corresponds to the volume of the parallelepiped. So here it will correspond to, if I take the center here, since A here, I have minus A divided by 2, A divided by 2. Uh, Cartesian product with the same for B, so I will have minus B divided by 2, B divided by 2. And here, the same for the other direction, minus C divided by 2, C divided by 2, and this corresponds to my volume V which is a box. So here, if you prefer, we have a triple integral that I represented here, only one. Uh, the density is constant, so this corresponds to a single coefficient, I will call it rho, like this. And uh, for the first coefficient, I will have to integrate y2 plus z2 uh, and uh, here I will have dx, dy, dz. So only for the first coefficient to start. And by symmetry, I will be able to deduce this one and this one by the permutation of the variables x, y, and z. Okay. So i11 is equal to so since here x does not uh, appear, I will be able to uh, to write like this. So rho is constant. Rho times a here multiplied by the integral of so a double integral minus b divided by two b divided by two minus c divided by two c divided by two and here. I will have y2 plus z2 dy dz. Okay, so I have made the integration with respect to x. It is equal to rho a double integral on the same domain of y2 dy dz plus rho a integral of z to dy dz. Here it's the same domain as this one. Uh, now, since z does not occur here, and here uh, y does not occur in the expression of the integral, I will be able to integrate like this, and I obtain rho a, so here it's a uh, uh, diameter of this interval is C, and this one is B, so I will have here 
integral between minus b divided by 2, b divided by 2. So the c is here, and I have only one integral. y2 dy plus the same here, rho a b integral on now is minus c divided by 2, c divided by 2, z square dz, which is equal to rho ac. I compute the primitive, and it's given by 1 third y cube between b divided by 2 and minus b divided by 2, plus rho a b primitive is one third of z cube between minus c divided by two c divided by two uh, this is equal to rho a c and this is two third uh, p cube divided by 2 cube plus rho a b 2 third c cube divided by 2 cube which is equal to rho a c b cube divided by 12 plus rho a b c cube divided by 12 now i know that m the mass is equal to the density rho multiplied by a b c okay as a consequence I will get that y11, i11 equal to, and I will have some simplification. I will have m divided by 12 multiplied by p square plus c square. So the cube is now a square. So this is the first element of my inertia matrix. Now I will compute the second element. The second element is I12. And this will be equal to, from the definition, it will be equal to minus integral. And also I will have minus A divided by 2, A divided by 2 on the whole parallelepiped. And the last one. Uh, here I will have rho x, y, dx, dy. Uh, it does not depend on c, so I will have obtained here minus rho c. First integral minus a divided by 2, a divided by 2, something here, and here I will have x dx, so I separate like this. And here I have the other integral between minus b divided by 2, b divided by 2, y dx, uh, dy, excuse me. Okay, now it is clear that this is equal to zero. As a consequence, here I will have zero. Now let me come back to this one. Here I obtain, I have computed this element and this element. As a consequence, I obtain that i is equal to 1 divided by 12. The first element was 
so it was m here b square plus c square and so the one was zero and by permutation i obtain that the diagonal is a square plus b square uh, here yep. here i will have zero 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 and this is a diagonal matrix which will be written later like this a1 a2 a3 with zero here question number two we recall the Euler equation governing the rotation of a solid body it is given here and from this i have to give the state equation uh, taking into account the fact that now i know uh, the matrix uh, i and i will give uh, a scalar decomposition of this uh, expression so question number two uh, the Euler equation is given by omega r dot is equal to minus i uh, the inverse and omega r a vector product with e omega r okay and now I will consider that uh, omega r is given by omega 1, omega 2, omega 3. So first, I know that uh, the matrix I is diagonal because I have uh, chosen uh, the body frame so that it corresponds to the Eigen vectors of the inertia matrix. Uh, but it is not always the case. But in general, we choose the frame of the body of the body so that the matrix uh, I is uh, is diagonal. I have uh, this, and I know that I is diagonal and is given by I one, I two, I three, and I know this coefficient with respect to A, B, and C and M. Okay, the the characteristic of uh, my parallelepiped. So from this, since it is diagonal, here I will get for this vector, I will get I1 omega 1, I2 omega 2, and I3 omega 3. I have to make the scalar product with omega 1, omega 2, omega 3 to compute this. So this is given by, so I make uh, for the vector product, I have to do first this and this, okay? And this will give me for uh, I3, omega 2, omega 3, minus I2, omega 2, omega 3. Uh, the same for the others. So I will obtain here uh, for the second one this and this, but the signature is minus 1, so I have to put here minus I3 omega 1 omega 3 plus I1 omega 1 omega 3. And here I2 omega 1 omega 2 minus 1 omega 1 omega 2. And now I have to multiply by this. So this is equal to here uh, minus I1 inverse minus I2 inverse minus I3 inverse and zeros here. 
So the multiplication is easy, and I will, it will make me, if I remove this, minus, so divided here by I1, divided here by I2, and divided here by I3, and I will have a minus in front. So if I do this, I will rewrite like this, and taking into account that this is equal to this, this is equal to this, and so on. So I obtain that uh, uh, from the Euler equation here, this term, I will have omega dot 1, so this one, is equal to I2 minus I3 divided by I1 omega 2 omega 3 omega 2 dot it equal I3 minus I1 divided by I2 here omega 1 omega 3 and here I1 minus I2 divided by I3 omega 1 omega 2 okay so for simplicity uh, this coefficient I will call it uh, alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 and since I know the uh, element uh, uh, of the matrix the inertial matrix with respect to a b a c I can easily check that alpha 1 is equal to c square minus b square divided by b2 plus c2 alpha 2 is equal to I2 minus I C2 divided by A square plus C square. And the last one, alpha 3 is equal to pi 2 minus 2 divided by A2 plus B2. Question number 3. I have to give the equilibrium point of the system in the state space. And I have to conclude about the rotation of any asteroid uh, rotating in the space. Okay, so I have my earlier equation here. The question number three. Uh, what is an equilibrium point? I need, uh, if I have a system like this, f dot equal f of x, equilibrium point uh, in in system theory means that uh, I have to solve that x dot is equal to zero and to find the uh, this state that uh, satisfy x dot equals zero since x dot equal f of x I have to solve f of x equals zero so in my situation of rotating body of course they are always moving and I have only to so uh, state uh, equilibrium state can also be called a steady rotation. It means that the rotation does not move. The body moves, but the rotation is uh, static. If you want. So in this case, uh, I have to solve this is equal to zero. And in this case, I will have this equal to zero, and it means that omega 1, omega 2, and omega 3 will be constant the rotation will be in a steady state. So to th solve this, uh, since all these coefficients are different to zero, so I will assume that uh, I1, I2, and I3 are different, all different. So it means that all these coefficients are non-zero. So the steady rotation uh, are obtained by solving, by Solving this is equal to zero, and it means that either omega, uh, so I have to solve this should be equal to zero. Uh, 
omega 1 omega 3 should also be equal to 0 and this one uh, omega 1 omega 2 should also be equal to 0 so I have this so this is equivalent to say that at least two of them should be equal to zero. So I can replace uh, the end by an or. So at least two of the uh, rotation omega 1, omega 2, omega 3 should be equal to zero. So for a rigid body uh, in, in the space, what does that mean? It means that uh, uh, if I start a rotation, but maybe I will not converge to a steady rotation. So I have a body like this. Okay, here I have uh, the rotation with respect to omega 1, omega 2, omega 3, corresponding to the eigenvector of the inertial matrix of my body. And for the initialization, maybe the rotation will be like this, no, not, uh, will not satisfy this. So it means that there is some precision and it will move in all directions and you will get some uh, internal friction inside the body and uh, the kinetic energy of the body uh, will, uh, uh, due to this internal friction, will transform into heat until a steady rotation occurs. So at the end, not at the beginning, but after a transient response, the body will rotate either along omega 1 or along omega 2 or along omega 3. Question number four, I have to, to study the stability of the rotation along uh, the steady states, it means uh, along the steady rotation. So for this, I will consider uh, my Euler equation again, so I will rewrite them. So question number four, the Euler equation are uh, omega dot one is equal to alpha one omega two omega three omega dot two equal alpha two omega one omega three omega dot three is equal to alpha three omega one omega two okay from this I have to choose a steady rotation. So omega bar can be, for instance, omega bar 1, 0, 0. But at least two of them should be equal to 0. Otherwise, it is not a steady rotation. So I will consider this one. And by permutation of the indexes, I will be able to deduce what happened for the other steady rotation. So for this, uh, I, I know that uh, uh, the, the linearization, so I will linearize this system around this, this rotation. So omega dot 1, omega dot 2, omega dot 3 is approximately equal around this one uh, to omega bar, so omega bar uh, I will write like this, plus the Jacobian matrix at the neighborhood of uh, computed at omega bar multiply by so I will here I will write omega minus omega bar so here I compute uh, the for the Jacobian matrix the derivative of this one with respect to omega one and it is zero derivative of this one with respect to omega 2 and it will be equal to alpha 1 omega 3 but I compute uh, near omega bar so in the general case I will consider like this and after I will take two of them are equal to zero uh, so here I have bar because I compute the Jacobian matrix at the neighborhood of omega bar. So here I will have alpha 1 omega 2 bar and again here the derivative of this one with respect to omega 1, omega 2 and omega 3. I will obtain alpha 2 omega 3 bar 
0, alpha 2, omega bar 1, here 0, alpha 3, omega 2 bar, and alpha 3, omega 1 bar. Okay. Now, uh, I will only consider at the neighborhood of this one. So it means that uh, omega 2 bar, omega 3 bar are equal to 0. And if I do this, all this one will become 0, of course. 0, 0, and uh, it will remain only this one and this one. So the matrix that will be important for me is, I will write this one for the stability, to study the stability. It will have the form 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, alpha 2, omega 1 bar, 0, 0 alpha 3, omega 1 bar, 0. So I will study the stability the eigenvalue of this matrix to conclude about the stability of the system. And for this, I have to compute the characteristic polynomial P of S is equal to the determinant of I uh, minus, uh, uh, oh, S minus uh, matrix I want to compute, the, I will call it A. So this one is A and uh, it will be equal to the determinant of this matrix, S, S, S for Si, and here I will have uh, minus alpha 2 omega 1 bar, alpha 3 omega 1 bar, 0, 0, 0, 0, and I compute this one. So it will be equal to this coefficient time the determinant of this one, and I will obtain s times s uh, times s, s square minus omega 1 bar multiplied by omega so square alpha 2 alpha 3. So it means that I have three roots. The first root corresponds to this one is equal to 0. So s equal to 0 is the first root. And the first root uh, just tell me that uh, I have not only one equilibrium point, but an infinite number along uh, the omega 1 axis. So it's this one is quite logical, it's not surprising, and probably the eigenvector associated to this correspond to 1, 0, 0, because I have assumed that I rotate along omega 1. And the one which is related to the precession, what we call the precession, is this one. Uh, so I will try to, to check uh, the condition for alpha 1, uh, alpha 2, uh, so alpha 2, alpha 3, so that my system is uh, stable or unstable. So I can see that, uh, uh, I recall that for the instability of this polynomial, I compute uh, the, uh, uh, the roots for this one, and I can see that with respect to S, uh, this will have either this shape. So in this case, I will have a positive and a negative eigenvalue. So here I have a representation of S2 minus omega 1 square alpha 2 alpha 3. And this is the case if alpha 2, alpha 3 is positive. But I have also this situation, another situation like this, which corresponds to alpha 2, alpha 3 negative. And it means that I will have two, uh, two uh, imaginary roots. So if I want, I will have here my complex plane, 
my complex plane. So either the roots are like this, here and here, and it translates into oscillation, like this. Or uh, I have something like uh, the blue here, this one and this one. And since at least one of the root is on the positive part of the complex plane, so here it is a complex plane, then I will have some instability like this. Okay, uh, so for this, uh, I will study the two situations. First, alpha 2 multiplied by alpha 3 is positive. So I can also, uh, since I know the expression of alpha 2, alpha 3 with respect to the coefficient of the inertial matrix, I know that it means that I3 minus I1 divided by I2, it corresponds to alpha 2, multiply by I1 minus I2 divided by I3 uh, should be positive. So in this situation. Uh, so uh, uh, this one, I recall, that corresponds to instability. Now, this coefficient is positive, and this coefficient is also positive. So it means that uh, this translate it is equivalent to say that uh, I3 minus I1 multiplied by I1 minus I2 is positive. So what it means? It means that if I draw here respect to zero this coefficient, here I will have, let's say, a two like this, uh, I three like this. This means that I one is inside the interval delimited by I two and I three. Okay. If it is outside, it means that this quantity is negative. Okay. So it means that uh, I1, uh, the direction uh, omega 1, corresponds to the intermediate inertial uh, uh, axis. Okay. So the other situation is correspond to the stability. It means that alpha 2 times alpha 3 is negative, and it is illustrated by the cross here. It means that I am not the intermediate axis. In this case, the roots are given by S is equal uh, plus or minus J omega by 1 square root of al minus alpha 2 alpha 3. So minus, since it is negative, this becomes positive. If I replace by the coefficient uh, of the initial matrix, I will obtain like this, this multiply by the square root of minus I3 minus I1 I1 minus I2 divided by I2, I3. And this gives me uh, the frequency, the pulsation of the frequency uh, corresponding to the precision. So the fact that I am uh, the axis of rotation oscillate uh, 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 at the neighborhood of uh, the first axis omega 1. So this is uh, this instability uh, is known as a uh, tennis racket uh, theorem, which states that uh, the rotation of a rigid body, like uh, a meteorite or the Earth, also, uh, oh, it is st stable around its first and 
the third principal axis, and it is unstable around its second principal axis. So it is very rare to see an object in the space oscillating uh, uh, around the second principal axis. And in this case, we, we obtain the phenomenon we wanted to explain in this exercise. Question number five, I have to provide a simulation uh, of the unstable situation. So for this, I take a parapiped rotating uh, along uh, one of its principal axes, and I will take uh, for the dimension of the parapiped A, B, and C as given here, and the mass is equal to one kilogram. So here, uh, I propose first a Python program. Uh, the Python program uses uh, the Roblib library. I start from a cube. I translate to put it in the center, so it is a unit cube. I translate it, and I multiply by this diagonal matrix. So everything is in homogeneous coordinate, for simplicity, just uh, uh, to, to manipulate a three-dimensional object. So I give the right dimension, A, B, and C, given here. Uh, and uh, then I will uh, rotate it. So for this, the draw function needs the orientation given by your matrix R, which is a rotation matrix, to draw the object. So the object is like this. So A corresponds to this dimension, A, B corresponds to this dimension, and C to the largest one. So C is like this. Okay. Um, now, uh, just for the first uh, program, the rotation matrix is given by the uh, identity. Okay. So it should be a rotation matrix, otherwise it has no sense. And moreover, I will draw uh, a vector given here, here in magenta, which corresponds to omega r. So here I put omega r is equal to 0, 1, 0, but I can put something else. So I switch uh, to Python here. I run this program and I can see here my object. So if I change the rotation matrix here, or it will rotate my object. But if I put something which is not a, uh, a rotation matrix, such as for instance this one, the object will have some transformation I don't want, for instance here the object is larger than before. So it is not what I want. Here, always a rotation matrix. And here, if I change the axis like this, then I can see that the rotation, the vector magenta, has changed its orientation. For the rotation of my body, I need to integrate a, a state equation. So the first one is uh, is the Euler equation. So the Euler equation is given by omega dot r is equal by a minus one omega r vector uh, vector product omega r like this, and the other one is r dot is equal to r multiplied by omega r vector. So this is a matrix. So of course, I, I could uh, integrate, uh, the, I, I, for the orientation, I could have used uh, the Euler angles. But to avoid the singularities, and here I will have singularities because I want to rotate in all directions. So it's much more comfortable to represent the orientation not by phi, theta, and c, the Euler angle uh, for which I will find some singularities, but it is uh, better to use here the orientation using the uh, uh, rotation matrix R. And this one satisfies this differential equation. So I will have to integrate this. So it has the form of x dot equal f of x, 
classical uh, state equation, where x here corresponds to omega r, this vector, 3, 1 vector, and the rotation r, which is 3, 3. So it is redundant because I want this be a rotation matrix, so I satisfy some constraints, such as this one, is equal to identity. So it is, uh, okay. So for this, what is classical to integrate this one is to use the Euler integration chain, so which tells me that the state at time t plus dt is equal to x at time t plus dt multiplied by f of x of t, if I want to integrate this one. So it is what I will do, but for this system, for this system, and I will see what I get. So I switch, uh, I take here the Python following Python program, given here. And I have here my uh, x the state which corresponds to omega r and r which is initialized here so for omega r and r. Uh, here I put uh, something just near uh, to uh, the direction, so to this direction uh, correspond to the second direction, to the green direction, so with respect to y. This is x and this is z. Okay. Uh, for the initialization, I start with this configuration. So this is why the initial r is equal to identity. And here, I apply the Euler integration chain, which is not accurate, as we will see. Uh, and we'll see one of the main problems that will appear is that uh, the rotation matrix here, due to this integration chain, if R is a rotation matrix, this should normally, if dt is infinitely small, should also be a rotation matrix. But recall that uh, R, the rotation matrix, uh, belongs to R33, So a rotation matrix, such as this one, is a point in this space of dimension 9. And along this state of matrix, I have a manifold. So a set of matrices that are rotation matrix, such as this one, and some other that are not, such as this one. And normally, this trajectory should stay inside this one. But due to this approximation, then I will go out of uh, this uh, manifold and I may manipulate in my program something which is almost a rotation matrix, but not exactly one. And slowly and slowly, I will diverge from this set, which is called SO3, which is a set of rotation matrices, and it is what I will see now. I switch here to this program and I will run it. I can see my object rotating like this. I can see that slowly and slowly uh, I have, uh, I can observe, so I will put here, I take 200 something more, what I can see is that the shape of the object is changing. It becomes bigger and bigger. And it is due to the fact that R is not anymore a rotation matrix. So it is why I should project it on SO3, and it is what is done by this procedure. If I do this, if I run it Again, probably more. 
then I will always have a rotation matrix. So I can see that it is rotating and I have the instability which shows that the red face which was uh, changed its orientation. It was oriented toward the negative uh, omega 2 and now it is oriented to the positive omega 2. To integrate the differential equation uh, on uh, the rotation vector and uh, the orientation r, uh, it's better to use the Runge-Kutta method. So a possible one is given here, where uh, this one is given for uh, something like x dot equal f of x. Okay, but here x, the state, correspond to omega and r. So for this, uh, I uh, create an intermediate state which corresponds to this inside f and I will call it xi. Well, this is why I will have xi is equal to omega i r i, intermediate state. And uh, this is why I, I program here. So I use the function f for this evolu the evolution of r and omega r. I constitute here my uh, the uh, my intermediate state here, and I apply the Runge-Kutta method here. If I switch to Python here, I run the program. I can see here the red face oriented toward us, like this. And we will see from the top that the orientation changes and now the red face is on the right. In green it is the shadow. Okay, so re uh, periodically there is a change of orientation. So it is related to the instability with respect to this axis and it is what we ob observe in the video. Okay. okay, now due to the fact that the Runge-Kutta method is accurate, I don't need this one anymore. But uh, if I integrate for a very long time, so of course I will have the same phenomenon, uh, which means that the rotation uh, go out of SO3 and is not a rotation matrix anymore. But for a short period of time, such as here, I will uh, probably obtain something which is very similar. As we can see here. So there is no deformation. And I can see the same phenomenon as we had before. If I draw uh, the evolution of omega 1, omega 2, and omega 3, so here it, it corresponds to the first, second, and third axis. So if I initialize uh, just here, which corresponds to the direction B, so the second axis, and recall that A is smaller than B, smaller than C, and B corresponds to the second axis, which is unstable. So in is, uh, if I initialize the orientation vector just near this one, then I will observe uh, a change of sudden and periodic change of omega 2 as illustrated here. So it is periodic. Uh, and you can see here uh, the period of this oscillation as we have seen in the video. Now, if I initialize the rotation around another axis, for instance, this one uh, or this one, then this instability will not occur anymore. And this is known as uh, uh, Zanibekov effect.